Steam operations in China extend north to Nansha and beyond on the standard gauge and the narrow gauge lines of Yichun and Langshan, while to the west steam extends to Lanzhou and Baotou. The sheer magic of steam in sub-zero China is a sight, sound and smell quite incomparable to any other place on earth and a pure delight to all lovers of the venerable steam locomotive. We begin our journey across China in the Tangshan region, east of Beijing. The loco works at Tangshan continues to build SY class, a design which follows that of the Japanese JF light Mikados. Seen here in the works yard, SYs take their first breath of steam before entering industrial service. Tangshan coal mine operates a supershine full deflected SY for use on the workers' paddy train service from the pit heads. Hello. Hello. Most of the marshalling work at Tangshan is done by YJ-262s, built in China during the 1960s, also exclusively for industrial service.
the ubiquitous 2102 QJ, known in China as Advance Forward, based on an original Russian design, the most numerous mainline performers, were built well into the 1980s. They continue to be outshopped, often leading to a striking appearance. However, the encroachment of diesels is beginning to seriously undermine steam operations, particularly on mainline duties. Northeast now to Shenyang. The Motive Power Depot here contains a fascinating variety of locos. Little is known about this GJ 060 tank. Possibly the last working member of her class. She now works pilot duties. Shenyang's Hanhe Junction in 1988 was still predominantly worked by steam.
The route from Shenyang to Changchun is worked predominantly by steam, as witnessed by the passing of several major steam depots. In spite of ever-increasing diesels, Changchun remains the mecca for steam in China. The region's motive power along with the QJs, include the RM Pacific, known as the People's Type, built for express passenger work in China during the 1950s. The SL Pacific, known as the Victory Type, was originally designed and built for express passenger work by the Japanese in 1933. The final batches were built in China up until 1958. SLs are popular with crews because of their free steaming and have a distinctive hollow exhaust beat. We now take a look at activities on Changchun's famous motive power depot. In common with all major sheds, as evening approaches, engine disposal and preparation continue unabated.
Notice the low grade powdery coal. Crews are well used to this and cope with specially modified fireboxes. JF Mikado, developed by the Japanese in 1935 from an original 1918 Alco design, was a highly successful and capable freight loco, now sadly relegated to secondary duties. Later JF batches were built by the Chinese until 1957. The JS, or construction type, is virtually the modern version of the JF, with a much improved boiler. Built in China from 1958 until the mid-1980s, JSs can still be seen on freight and passenger workings, as well as pilot duties, minus elephantier style deflectors.
Chen Chun's busy East Junction Yard sees steam action 24 hours a day. With temperatures plummeting to minus 25 and lower, the photographer is forced to take refuge in the warmth of a control cabin.
with severe ruling grades, the route between Changchun and Jilin is a test for any engine. A quaintly named station near Jilin, called Lung Tong Shan, meaning Dragon Pond Hill, plays host to most of the logo types previously seen. If any location really feels Chinese, it would be hard to beat Dragon Pond Hill.
Gillian Depot is typical of Chinese steam sheds, locos generally being stabled in the open, whilst heavy repairs are done indoors.
locals enjoying midwinter activities on a frozen lake near Jilin pay no attention to the SL Pacific passing light engine, all of which sadly have now been withdrawn from service. Jilin Station, in common with most major stations, allows passengers onto the platform just prior to train arrival. The extensive waiting hall being welcome refuge from the elements. Again we head north, ever nearer to the Siberian border. Adequate provision is made also for stoking the Grice's belly. At Langsheng, in the frozen north, we take a look at the narrow gauge forestry trains. Working both logging and passenger trains on the 2 foot 6 gauge are the powerful 080 Type 48s, based on a Russian design. Initially built during the 1970s in Eastern Europe, these tiny titans continued to be built in China well into the 1980s. Langsheng's picturesque forestry railway covers 105 miles, over which 11 of these 28-ton locos operate. The town's logging industry being established during the Japanese occupation in the 1930s. A passenger train traverses the system each day and provides the only access to many workers' communities.
Engine servicing points are located at several spots along the way. Yeah. 
from the narrow gauge at Langsheng, we rejoin the main line. Destination Nancha. A location well known among ricers for the steep grades over Nancha Bank. The most unusual working by Western standards is the unofficial local passenger service provided by the Nancha Banker.
The steam shed at Nancha, with its allocation of QJ, JS and RMs, would have to rank as one of the most atmospheric in China. We now head southwest to Lanzhou in Genshu province. The serious pollution here can be appreciated from this high position looking across the city.
Rangel depot is designed in the more European straight shed style. Our final destination is Bao Tou, Inner Mongolia. As our fireman prepares his engine for the journey, he seems startled by the camera. Not everyone is entirely thrilled by rail travel, especially in hard class. The severe grades across the desolate landscapes around Bao Tau are quite a challenge for engine crews, and not infrequently freight workings require triple heading, as seen here. However, the main attraction of this highly industrialized city is the Baotau Steelworks, host to two of the more scarce industrial types. Seen here between duties is class ET7. The class was built in Poland between 1959 and 1961, an 080 tank. Also to be seen at the steelworks is class XK-060 tank, better known in Europe as the Ferrum 47, also built in Poland between 1947 and 1961. SY class also see work within the complex.
sadly, even in China, the steam locomotive is fast becoming superseded by diesel and electric motive power.